here, what an honor it is, and we welcome you. If you have a copy of God's Word, I encourage you to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 39. If you got the brand new church app, you're going to have it all right there in front of you. Welcome to week number two of the series that I've entitled Coat Tales, T-A-L-E-S, the tales are the tales of Joseph. The coattails are tales we want to ride on because it's something that's a testimony. Matter of fact, if I could pick a story or a life to study in the Old Testament and say, hey, this is, would be my favorite or my, my choice, it's, it's definitely Joseph. Uh, such a powerful picture. I mentioned last week, and I encourage you maybe to download or to look at that. I mentioned 15 different spots within that text, uh, within this story, I should say, that tell about the mirror, or as it would be called if you were studying it in Old Testament survey, the type and shadow found between Jesus and the life of Joseph mirrored in the Old Testament. Love it. If I could pick New Testament, I'm going to say the book of James. And for you that were here last week, you know we talked a little bit about this coat, which was the coat of many colors. Or we use the word tunic because it gave a picture of full covering all the way to the wrist, all the way to the ankles. And you have that coat of covering, that coat of favor. It's a manifold blessing from God. Matter of fact, it is the word manifold. It's a diversity of beauty from God given to your life, the fullness of who he is. You're favored by God. You're his favorite. The scripture teaches this. And that it's mirrored in this Old Testament story, lived out in the reflective beauty of Jesus' death on the cross, payment for our sin. Then we are, the scripture says, coated or clothed. In his righteousness. And because of that, we get to walk in his favor and his blessing. Matter of fact, would you lean over to somebody you kind of like and just say, You're God's favorite? Just tell them real quick. Just you, let them know that you're God's favorite. And we're gonna be looking at a second coat. And we're gonna be looking at four total in this series, but we're gonna look today at this coat, which is the coat of character. The coat of character. Joseph in the story, you see, he had a dream. He shared his dream. And in sharing his dream up until he was 17 years old, his brothers belittled his dream, maybe even had a little bit of envy. Can I just throw this out there free of charge for all campuses? This is for everybody at Bergman, online, Calico Rock, everybody. I just want to throw this free of charge. Envy is possibly the ugliest sin in the Christian community. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, it, it, it's ugly. And, and envy in others. And what's crazy is you get older, you start envying, not necessarily things, but you start envying the successes of people you love. Crazy. And uh, 32 years in, I'm just now, um, I guess I should say, learning this. But they envied his brother. What'd they do? They threw him in a pit. They bloodied the favor which again is a picture of Jesus shed blood. I ain't got time to preach that because it preaches too good and I ain't got enough time. But it's the picture of the favor, the blood covered favor. Jesus covered us, the sin, the shame of others, of ourselves. He's paid it all so we can live in that favor and live in that righteousness and live in that anointing. Joseph then was sold into slavery and that's where we find the second coat. He's sold into slavery and he ends up at the general of the Egyptian army's house in this guy's name as you already know, is Potiphar. He's the general of the largest army in the world at this time in human history ever. And he's running this thing. He hires some assistants, some slaves. And Joseph is one of those that he hired off the market. Joseph then becomes, as you already know, he's favored. He's he's given unbelievable blessing. And then Potiphar saw, the general saw how effective he was. He's like, hey, I'm giving you charge of my whole house. The whole thing. I I keep nothing from you except this one thing in the house that wanted him. He didn't necessarily want her, but she wanted him. And I'm going to use this. The Bible doesn't tell her name, but just for the sake of bad exegesis, I'm going to call her Hotifer. Now, Potiphar is, uh, you know, he's busy. He's everywhere. He's he's leading this unbelievable army. They're conquering the world. I mean, until the Romans come, there's there's no um, regime, there's no world order, there's no economy like the Egyptian economy. And he says, Joseph, take care of all this for me. 
and you can, you can have anything in the house, anything is yours except for my wife, which again we are calling Hotifer. And Hotifer wanted to spend a little extra time with Joseph. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't know how rated I'm going to be in this service. Early service, we went rated PG-13, so I'm going to try to definitely keep it at least under that. But here's what transpired. Hotifer every day wants to have sex with Joseph. Every single day. And he is having to choose this coat. Now, what I want to say about the difference between the code of favor and the code of character or the code of salvation and the code of character is this. God's responsibility is the coat of favor. Your responsibility is the code of character. God's not doing this for you. Now, you have all of God living in you. You have all the power of Christ living in you. You're clothed in righteousness. But as a Christ follower, you and I have to operate in the success of the coat of character. And Hotifer, you know, you know she had it going on. I don't want to be explicit about curves and all this, but she's the general's wife. If you know what I'm talking about, say yeah. Yeah. You know she's, she's, and she's working her game. She's like, Joseph is the man. By the way, can I just say this? People think once you accept Christ, and then once you become a convicted man of God, and then you start living according to character, then you start becoming successful in your business. Let me tell you something. There is nothing more attractive to the world than conviction. There's nothing more attractive to a lost world than character. I promise you, do you think, oh man, once they'll know? No, they, they, they are drawn to it. They're drawn to it. It's an indirect mission of the gospel, but you have to choose to live and put this coat on, which I can tell you right now, I ain't ever wearing this coat, but it's Jeremy Woody's. And uh, <laughs> at least he, got, he gave it to me, but uh, he wears this. We need to talk right now, but... Uh, This is the code of character that you have to put on. And you have to put it on every day. We'll talk more about that in a few moments. God's responsibility is here. And you have it. Your responsibility is here. Why are there, can I just, let's just ask this question. Why are there Hotifers in our life? Why is there, I mean, if you love God, if you've got a dream... If you know the mission needs to be done, which his dream's huge. He's saving the whole world, literally, physically. Why would anybody then choose to throw Hotifer? Why didn't he get picked up at some other home? Or why did he? Here's why. I believe there's three reasons there's Hotifers in our lives. Number one is this, to reveal our weaknesses. In other words, we need to figure out what's going on, what we're doing, how we're operating, and be more successful in our own life spiritually. So, you know, hey, I'm vulnerable here. I have this vulnerability here. God wants to reveal these weaknesses in our life so that we can be more successful spiritually. Now, I just want to hit pause here and get as honest and transparent as I can. If you're walking with Christ and have never faced the battle of sexual temptation, of an immoral relationship, of something outside of your current marriage, for those of us that are married and for those of us that are single, for just having that temptation of a wrong relationship, if you've never been there, you're lying. Now, if you're like, no, I never have and I never have, you need to come counsel me. Because I know this, God has revealed my weaknesses two different times in 32 years of ministry that even mentioning the fact that this root was on the path and journey of my life spiritually makes me sweat, which a lot of things make me sweat. I sweat a lot, actually. But it it makes me just feel that gasp of, oh, gosh. I mean, scary. Where you sit back and go, whoa. Whoa. Because you see the warning sign. And I know that I had to every day put on this code of character at a greater level. Why? Because for me, it wasn't anything where there was a community across the line, a text, uh, Facebook friends. It was simply this, that I knew I was looking for an emotional moment of connection of someone celebrating what I do or what I was doing and that was enough dopamine for me to find myself emotionally triggered and it was sin 
And I had to put the coat on. Matter of fact, I had to share specifically with my wife things that I had to do to better myself so that I could protect myself to be successful. God has filled you. Now you and I have to do our part. What? Put the coat on. Now, I know what people say, and especially as Christ followers, we want to sit back and say, oh, man, I've never been there. I love the Lord Jesus, and I've never been tempted. Well, good for you, liar. No, I'm not saying you're a liar, but probably are. But I'm just saying we've all been there. We've all battled this. Here's the thing. You're covered. If you know you're covered and Jesus has paid it all, say amen. Amen. Come on, say amen. You know that. But here's the thing. We're left here for mission, and our mission's so important, we need the code of character on so people can see the code of favor that God wants to do and fulfill in our mission of sharing the gospel. And God wants to reveal weaknesses in my life, and he's like, Shannon, where do you find your encouragement from? It needs to be from me. And then I'm blessed to have an amazing wife and family. But we have these hotifers in our life to reveal weaknesses. And number two, and this is really where God had me, is to watchfulness. To reveal watchfulness. Well, we've got to sit back and go, whoa. Whoa, this is big. I, I got to step it up. I got to tighten the belt. Is there a belt on this? Yeah. yeah it looks like Jeremy's size. This is not my size belt, but it's Jeremy's size. You got to tighten it up. You got to make sure you got this thing on tight. And then not only to reveal watchfulness, but I, I believe also to reveal a sense of warrior. Where you just got to, you got to fight. You got to step up and fight for your marriage, fight for purity, fight for holiness. We're holy in Christ, but you got to step up and fight. And sometimes this happens after you've already bombed. And you made a mistake, you failed, you ask God to forgive you, you get this thing right, you get your relationships right, and then you walk in that warrior mentality. Is there consequences possibly in your situation, but you still, I'm warrioring through this and I want to win. And I want to win. It says in Genesis 39 in verse number 12, it gives us steps so that we can succeed. I'm going to start in 12. We're going to jump back up to a few verses. But here's what it says. It says that Hotifer, in verse 12, caught him by his garment. So he's walking, serving, whatever he's doing, bringing her coffee, bringing her uh, a latte, whatever it is. He, he runs across her in the hallway. And it says that she caught him by his garment. So he's walking by, she's tugging on the Victor's secret robe of Jeremy here, and she's tugging on it. It says, he caught her by her garment, and she says this, have sex with me. By the way, there's multiple times in this text where she's asked that. And it says this, but he left his garment in her hand as he ran outside. The code of character is then what she used to put him in jail. Now, it was a lie. But I'm just telling you, for those of you that got all into the Johnny and Amber trial, this ain't got, I mean, they ain't got nothing on this story. She's holding it up going, I can't believe he did this. I can't believe it. And he went to jail. And you're like, oh, if I make the... I'm not going to say who built this, but it rhymes with Jacob Hedges. <laughs> I, do, I, I know that when you walk through this and, and you're operating, you're like, man, if I operate in the code of character and everything, no, you're still going to, listen, you're going to have to find a new job. Now, in his situation, he didn't have it. Obviously, it was a different level of employment. But it says that he ran outside, and you need to do the same thing you got to build your character. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 22. It says, take an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life. Uh, look at this. A life brand new or renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. And that's you operating in that activity. That's you surrendering to that activity. That's you saying, okay, God, I want to be a part of it, and I'm, I'm taking this God-fashioned life, brand-new life, and I want to live it inside and out. 
work itself inside me. Let my conduct show accurately, and then it's reproduced as your character in my life. Why? Because we're trying to reach a lost world. We want to inspire those around us. How do we live and build this code of character in our life? Let's just look at the steps that Joseph did. Number one is this, please God. You need to live your life where you're saying, I want to honor you, God. Doesn't that sound so Sunday school? I mean, it just sounds like, oh, that's so simple. But it really is. You need to say, I want to honor you, God. Look what he says in verse 39. I mean, she, this Hotifer is working her game, multiple verses here. And he says, how then can I do? This is before 12 where she wants to lie with him again. I mean, this is up at the beginning. She's wanting to have sex with him. And he says this, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And there's a question mark here. And I'm not saying he's reasoning with his sin. I'm not saying he's questioning. I'm not saying he's rhetorically hoping that some way he can fail. But he is sitting there going, hey, can I just ask you a question here? I, can, I need to please God. And then his desire is to wear that coat and please God. And say yes to God's best. And that's the decision you and I have to make. we got to put the coat on. I remember really the second time that I found myself tripped up in a place where emotionally I was trying to find some type of support from somebody that wasn't my wife. And I remember at that place, and, and I, I was wrecked by the Holy Spirit of God, just... And again, never had any public lines crossed, but can I tell you this? The, the public line that's crossed was 10,000 little bitty steps that you had in your mind way before you ever crossed that line and got in a hotel. And, and that's what was so scary for me. It was these mental, emotional connections. And I remember just getting with God, and here's what he told me to do. He very clearly said this. He said, Shannon, I want you to sit down. And, and I did, and I sat down. With, with him, and I put a chair, I lit a candle, and I put a chair across from me, empty chair. And he said, make a list. And I started writing these names, just like this. And here's what he said. I want you to finish this list and write every name that you're going to have to tell the story to and wreck them because you weren't man enough to keep your pants on. And the list just kept going. At this time... I didn't have grandkids, but I'm adding it to the list now. I still have this list. I know many of you are wondering who Miguel is, but I've already named Maria's kid. <laughs> and I remember sitting there just weeping. of the, the injury that in my selfishness was almost willing to wreck. And I remember going back, and I, I remember writing this down, and for those of you that are brand new church, regular attenders or members, you know this, I thought, I've got to tell everybody at Romance Uncensored that I've taught all over this nation I'd have to tell all of our members of our church. All my social media presence. And then I, I found myself going, then I'm going to have to lean in 
on the justification of my sin, preaching grace, 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 instead of being able to preach to the next generation purity, and here's how it looks when you fight through it when you're in the middle of temptation. And then all of a sudden, I found myself in this, like I mentioned, this warrior mentality. I'm like, I will never, by God's grace, ever have to tell the story to my grandson that I wasn't man enough to put the phone down to get rid of whatever's necessary to stand up so I can leave a legacy. You're like, well, I made mistakes and I bet, yeah, the coat covers you. The coat covers you, you're covered. But I want to leave a legacy at a level that impacts generations. That I know if God tarries, that brand new church is still going to be here thriving, larger, healthier than ever. And they're telling the story of how I said yes to his best, even when Hotifer's trying to pull my coat of character off. And if you sit there as a Christ follower and say, oh man, when you love God, you know, these things just click and it's all good. You are lying to yourself and the enemy has set you up to fail. The guaranteed step of divorce is to say, I'll never have one. The guaranteed step of adultery is to say, oh, I'd never, I would never, I never. You've been, and if you've been there and God set you free, walk in this favor and put on the coat again and say, here's where I lost, but here's where I'm winning going forward in Jesus' name. I just finished a book that comes out in September. And I thought to myself, I'm going to have to put and ask my publisher and everybody that worked on this book. I wouldn't be able to publish it. What story are you willing to save? I would hate to tell my kids that I wasn't man enough when I didn't feel in love with my wife to stay in it anyway. And if you wake up every day feeling in love with your wife, please call me because I don't. I don't wake up every day feeling like a Christian. I don't wake up every day wanting to do the right thing. I do it anyway. And then the Spirit of God, once you access that, gives you the power. You already have it. You're accessing it because you're saying no to sin. And then you access it and you walk in it in victory in Jesus' name. I want to please God. Make a list. You want to ball your eyes out? Write down everybody you'd wreck. You couldn't keep your pants on. You, mean, you, want to, you want to be morally pure? Guys, wear this. This will keep you morally pure, I promise you. Number two is this. It's a daily battle. Genesis 39 and verse 10 says this. As she spoke to him day by day. Everybody's like, oh, man, once you get saved, once it's all this. No. It's every day. It's on the phone every day. It's at school every day. It's at work every day. It's on TV every day. It's in your relationship. It's every day. Oh, when, when I'm at church, it's every day. Pastors of churches all over the country dropping like flies. Monster churches dropping like flies every day. You're like, oh man, I'm in my 60s or 70s every day. The highest divorce rates now is in the ages of 61 to 68 years old in America. Crazy? Every day. Guard your heart. Every day. The code of character is not one one time. It's one every day. Why? Because my thing is this, God, I love you. I'm serving the church. Can you just get rid of the hotifers in my life? Can you get rid of it, whatever it is? I don't want that temptation. Don't, don't you love me? And he's like this. Here's the thing. I, Shannon, I don't want to, in any form or fashion, miss out on a moment to develop you. Because you and I, definitely me, maybe not you as much as me, I just wish God would pull it out of my life. But he's like, no. I'm not taking it out of your life. I'm going to leave it in your life to develop you. I want to make you better. And so you and I, day by day, have to choose the code of character so that we can experience his best in our life every day of our life. 
And I, and I promise you, it, it, you'd think it's going to settle down. No, God's more concerned about your character being a mission than your comfort. And there's some moments where it's going to be misery. But you and I want to be developed so we can experience an opportunity to share every day the gospel message of Jesus. I recently added to my list that I have, I added my gym. I mean, the whole reason I go there is so that people get excited about Jesus and maybe want to get a part of who he is and maybe even walk into this church one day. It's the reason I go. Number three, the step to keeping your code of character on is in verse number 10 as well. Look what it says. It says, he did not heed her. I'm reading New King James. I've been King James in it up. I'm getting old. I'm 50, so just bear with me. But I love this word. He did not heed her. What does that mean? He didn't pay no attention. He back up. Now, again, he was operating at a different career path that none of us are going to be in. But he did not heed her because she, he had to serve her. He was a slave. But he did not heed her. In other words, when she called, no answer. When she texted, he didn't text back. When she snapped, oh, yeah, he didn't have Snapchat because he loved Jesus. <laughs> All right, that's free of charge. I just put that in there for free. Everybody hate me now, don't they? I just tell people all the time, why you got Snapchat if you want to stay morally pure? Oh, I'm just snapping my, my kids. <laughs> what? No, you're not. You're snapping Hotifer that starts with a W. Why are you doing it? Why are you sitting there? If you want to not heed them, you're like, oh, man, oh, man, I can't do this. I can't do that. I, don't make any excuses. You do whatever it takes to get rid of cancer, would you not? You do whatever it takes to stay pure so that you can make a difference for the gospel. Not only that, I want to make a difference for this generation. I want to make a difference. I want them to tell the story. Did not heed her. And then what you have to do, what I have to do in taking heed is we've got to watch our life. And I want to spell the word watch. I hope this helps you. I hope this will give you some handles so that you can succeed going forward, so that I can succeed going forward. Here's how we watch our lives and guard our hearts from hotifers. Number one is this. You need to take care of your words. Take care of your words. Don't casually say things that you shouldn't be saying. The scripture says it this way. It says that your life is made up of your words. Matter of fact, it says that they're called fruit. And then it says, because of the fruit, you eat that. So if you're constantly saying things, I want a divorce. You're always like that. You're just constantly, I hate you. I'm sick of this. And maybe use words and call your spouse those words. You're going to eat those words. And that's what you're bringing into the health of your relationship. Now, here's the thing. I know what you're saying. You're like, oh, come on, Shannon. Is this... Jesus at the Lord's Supper is sitting there. And he's saying that you've got uh, you to understand that I'm coming to fulfill my mission. And, that, and then he goes on and he says this. He's like, and, and all of you are going to deny me. And Peter's like, no way. I love you. I'll never deny you. Never, ever. And he looks right at him because he's just continually lying, continually giving his Christian report. And Jesus got tired of it. And what did he do? He waved his hand and lightning came in. Do you remember that? No, you don't. Uh, actually, he fried the bread up and made pizza. No, he didn't. You know what he did? He used words. And he said, get behind me, Satan. He could have done anything he wanted. That's how powerful words are. That's why we use our words to edify our relationships, to inspire our children, to better our marriage. We don't say little things that motivate us to success because if you're constantly saying you won't, you won't. 
If you're constantly saying, I can't, you can't. You've got to speak, not into existence, name it, claim it, but speak what God's already said. And that is this, I'm favored. I'd say it every day. Wake up, tell your family, tell your wife, tell your kids, you're favored. And here's the thing, if you're married, you're not going to feel like your spouse is favored every day. Matter of fact, some days you're going to hope, I hope they don't really get that much favor today. You're going to feel that way. But either way, you operate in the righteousness, in the yes of God. You know what's right. And I sit back and I'm like, I'm not letting the enemy win. So I got to tell all these people that I didn't have enough self-discipline to love anyway when Jesus died on the cross for me. I'm choosing the right words. I'm choosing the A of watch is the right activity. Don't go places. Don't be involved in things where you're going to fail. Don't do it. If you're in a career path where you have to eat lunch with someone of the opposite gender, get a new career path. Don't set yourself up to fail. You're like, well, I can't. This ain't. Well, then get your spouse on FaceTime while you eat lunch with someone of the opposite gender. Just leave them there the whole time. Ask the waiter, if I give you 150 bucks, would you just sit here during our lunch? If the boss isn't going to let you do something, there's ways to win. Don't be traveling with the opposite gender. Don't be sitting there setting yourself up or you're not being involved intimately and initiating intimacy with your family, with your, excuse me, with your wife and encouraging great communication of intimacy with your family. Don't do it. Set it up. Do you feel like it? No. Who wants to communicate with your kid? You got teenagers? I can tell you the two answers. Nah, yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, yeah, that's it. That's all you got. It's not that good. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Can I throw this out to you singles? Can I tell you something? Whatever home you're going to have when you get married, you're developing right now. If you're sleazy on Snapchat, you're going to be sleazy with your spouse. Get the coat on now. And there ain't nobody worth finding that you find on Snapchat. They're a whore anyway. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> like, I found him on Snapchat. That's going to make everybody proud. Found him on Tinder. They only had a few medications they had to take. Activity. Get in the right activity. The T of watch is temptations. I want you to tell your neighbor right now that temptation is not a sin. Because it's true. It's not. Tell them. Say temptation is not a sin. Let them know. Encourage them real quick. Temptation is not a sin. It's not a sin. But in closing, here's the steps of temptation. It's given in James chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. I'd memorize this. It says, but each one is tempted when. If you're a highlighter, I would highlight that. When. Tempted when. Have you ever said the devil made me do it? No, he didn't. Look what it says. By your own evil desire. Oh, man, I've just been, and the devil just, devil can't, he ain't got no power over you. He ain't got power. Oh, man, the devil just reading my mind. He can't read your mind. Devil can't read your mind. Like, he's putting these thoughts in my head. He can't do that. Now, he, you can speak things out loud. He hears it, and he can activate it. That's why you don't say, my wife said I can't say crappy anymore. Stupid words. Don't do it. Why? Then he can activate them. Put the coat on and recognize it's you, your old and evil desire. When I was at my greatest trip up, all, I was looking for a dopamine hit from some type of emotional connection that was thinking I was great. And it's not my wife and it's not Jesus. It's not my kids. Look what it does. Then by my own de- evil desire, watch this. I'm drug away. It just... He's just taking you right with your coat. He's just dragging you. And I love this next word, enticed. See, the emotional connection is the dragging. Then there's a new sales pitch. Then the enticement. Then it says conception. Little bitty. It's a little, at conception, it's already a child. It's already... It's just a little bitty. It's just like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. My husband will never know. My wife will never know. And then what happens? Gives birth. The tragedy is this. Look at the end of the verse. It says, and when it's born, it dies. 
what dies? Not necessarily you physically. This. Oh. <laughs> Man, you talk about fear. I'm not a scary movie guy, but that's a scary movie. I want Prosper to tell my story. I want Miguel to tell my story. Whatever his name is. I want Cindy. Because I know she's going to outlive me. To tell my story. I want brand new church to tell my story. We ain't done. We ain't done. I want more of my gym in here. I want to baptize more of my gym workout buddies. What are you quitting for? Oh, he's, uh, you know, he doesn't love me. And of course he doesn't. He's a guy. He don't know how to love. We're dumb, ladies. Put it in your notes. Help him. I just sit there thinking four days from now, get to participate in a really neat wedding. It's the first wedding in 32 years I don't think I've done. I want to live it for them. I want to live it one day because I'm going to see my bridegroom, Jesus. Put it on. You're like, Shannon, I made mistakes. You're forgiven. Let's go from here. Amen? Let's go from here. And if you've made mistakes, help people not to make those same mistakes. Which leads me to the last thing, and that's character. Character is the C and habits. They're hand in hand. Character is not something you pray for. Character is something you do. Like, God, just give me godly character. No, that, that's a result of a lived out life. A-C-T. A-C-T. That's what's in the middle of the word character. You're like, oh, I just want godly character. That's lived out. Don't pray that. Live it. How? By great habits. You got to manage and take care of those habits. Because I can promise you this. If you're going places and you're participating in things that are going to lead you to sexual sin, you need habits where you don't anymore. It really is that simple. If you find yourself wanting to cheat because you're on this website or this social media, don't do it anymore. How's that? <laughs> Whoa! Just don't do it anymore. Don't go there anymore. You don't have to go. Those habits lead to great character. I love character. I love the word character. A-C-T. It's actually the root word is integer. Whole. That's what great character does. God put this one on you. You got to put this one on yourself. And with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I already know. I already know in your flesh, especially if you are battling some things right now, I already know the rebellion, the pride that's there. I've battled it. I've been there. Surrender. Surrender. Just say, Lord Jesus, I want to honor you as your favored to live with this code of character. Pray it. Mean it. Lord Jesus, thank you for the coattail that we can ride of directive obedience found in the life of your servant, Joseph. Let us live it out. And I know for me and maybe many others, it's like, oh, I'm 50. I'm not going to be there now. I won't have those battles. I know they just continue to happen. And I want to protect and live and, and be obedient to you and warrior up when things get difficult so that we can leave a legacy, but also so that we can live a legacy right now, today, so that the world can see your gospel through a life living out your best and obedience to you. And that's what I want to do. And I know many here do. I pray these things in Jesus' name. No one looking around, no one 
with your head up at any campus, if you said yes and you're putting on the code of character and living it in Jesus' name and by his grace, slip your hand up, put it right back down. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. It's time. Father, thank you for these commitments of obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. And you know what I love? I love when we take this step. And I, you know what I sense? I sense freedom in this place and all of our campuses, those participating in this moment online, whether it's Spotify, whether it's iTunes, whether it's YouTube. Can we just give God glory through applause for the freedom that's being given to so many? Would you do this for me? Would you participate in this next moment of worship? And how can we do that? We do that through the celebration of the tithe and offering. And I just want to say this to those of you that have been so faithful, regular attenders, thank you. We are watching God bless in so many ways. And just being able to gear up for school and ordering backpacks and shoes and ordering clothes and crayons and all these different things. I mean, notebooks, journals. It has been such a blessing to see that. Thank you for giving. Thank you for being a part. Let's pray and ask God to bless this moment of obedient tithing. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We ask you to be glorified as we give our best to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and so you much would. for participating with us online. So many of you have made this your online family and you want to invest. And it's so easy to do that. You can simply just text 84321 and in the body of your text a dollar sign and amount and the word give would be honored as you sow in as a part of our online family and also i just want to say thank you for being with us and if you would share this with somebody it would be a blessing to us also click like if you're with us and subscribe on youtube we're honored to have you with us at brand new church and brandnewchurch.com